the lion and the mouse Minky Mouse jumped as her oven suddenly went off with a loud ring. I think my chocolate cheese cupcakes are ready, said Minky as she pulled out the fresh baked treats. Hmm, they smell perfect. All I need are some juicy berries as toppings. But when she went up to her larder, she found she was out of berries. Oh no, there are no fresh berries. Cupcakes be ready for Big Bro's birthday party. No sooner had she said this when she heard the booming voice of Big Bro the elephant. Hey there, Minky! Hello, Big Bro, and a very happy birthday to you! Said Minky, waving to Big Bro from her window. I was on my way to get balloons for the party this evening and just dropped by to say hello. Of course, I also know you're baking my favorite cupcakes. said big bro with a big smile yes i am answered minky well then don't forget the yummy berry toppings because that's what makes your cupcakes perfect ta ta said big bro and left oh dear big bro is really looking forward to his favorite toppings and the party will start soon i must get berries somehow and quickly muttered minky worriedly then she had an idea The little water hole. Berries grow there all season. I will rush over right now. Minky scurried as fast as she could to the water hole. But Minky did not know that the water hole was Shamsher the lion's hunting spot. And no sooner did Minky pluck a few berries that Shamsher pounced. Minky trembled as Shamsher licked his lips. Mm, just in time for my evening snack. said Shamsher as he raced Minky closer to his mouth. Minky was very scared, but she decided she must think quickly if she were to save herself. Stop! Please stop! Oh, handsome mighty lion! squeaked Minky. Now, Shamsher had always been very proud about his looks, and he was extremely pleased to hear praise from anybody, even from someone he planned to eat. Ah! I see you have a fine eye for things. Tell me quick, what is it? Asked Shamsher. Minky continued, "Please don't eat me, oh great one. I'm too meek and tiny to fill your stomach. Let me go, and I promise that someday I will help you." Shamsher laughed aloud. "Ha ha ha! You are right about me being great and you being too puny. But you will be never of any use to me." Why would a fine strong creature like I ever want help from you? Even the strongest fall into difficult times. Please let me go now and I Minky promise not to forget your favor. Shamsher watched the little mouse a while and sighed. Oh, all right. Go on then. Run for your life before I change my mind. Go. And he let Minky loose. Oh, thank you, a generous Shamsher," said Minky, and ran home as fast as she could. Cupcakes in hand, set off for Big Bro's house, which stood in the middle of the coconut grove on the far side of the river. As Minky walked along, suddenly someone called from the dense bushes beside the bank. "Bro, help! I'm caught!" Minky peeked through the bushes and saw Shamsher trapped in a hunter's snare. A huge prickly net of thick rope covered him entirely, and the more he tugged at it, the more it tightened around him. Shamsher spotted Minky and called, "Minky, it's you! Oh, I'm glad someone heard me. I'm trapped." Minky nodded, but suddenly pricked her ears. She could hear human voices and footsteps. Oh, I think the hunters are coming, Shamsher. Oh no! They will take me away. Please, please help me. Set me free. Pleaded Shamsher. There is no way to loosen the net. The only way out is to cut right through it. Thought Minky. With not a moment to waste, she jumped onto Shamsher's shoulder and opened her mouth wide. Hey! Are you about to bite my ear? Shamsher cringed. No, silly lion. I'm going to chew through the rope and cut you free. Now. Hold still. 
And with that, Minky started gnawing at the rope with her sharp teeth. She was quick. And soon, Shamsher was free. The hunters parted the bushes only to find an angry free lion instead of a trapped one. Thank you so much, Minky. You were right. Being small doesn't make someone useless or weak. Everyone has their strengths. Minky smiled. You're welcome. By the way, do you like parties? You bet I do. Well, then come along. I bet Big Bro will love to have you over for his birthday. Right. Lead on, said Shamsher. But what's special for the birthday feast? Meat cutlets? Something even better, said Minky with a wink. And picking her hamper of yummy chocolate cheese cupcakes, she and Shamsher set off to wish Big Bro a very jolly birthday. Shamsher's little chit chat. La da da di da da. La da da from a little shampoo. I'm so handsome, and now my mane is too. Sang Shamsher the lion gustily as he finished shampooing his mane and flicked it back to admire it, even though it looked all flat and wet at the moment. It's okay, mane. I know that once you're dry, you'll be all bushy, bouncy, and glorious once again. Said Shamsher, brushing it back lovingly. Just then, Shamsher's toad clock croaked loud. <coughs> Oh, is it two o'clock in the afternoon already? Then it's lunch time," said Shamsher, and headed into his kitchen to fix himself a meal. But all he found when he opened the larder doors were dozing spiders on cobwebs. I can't believe it! I'm out of food. Well, you would only have food if you actually went out and got some, you lazy lion," said Cocky the naughty cockroach, and chuckled heartily. <laughs> I'll teach you a lesson, you smart mouth cockroach! Snarled an angry Shamsher as he tried to grab the smug cockroach, but Cocky dashed out of his reach swiftly and called out, "Ha! I'm too quick for you, Shamsher! And you're so out of practice sitting all day at home and brushing your mane that I bet you can't even catch yourself a snail! Ha ha! Some lion who can't even hurt!" Shamsher roared so loud and angrily at Cocky. That the walls of his house trembled and the glass on his windows jittered. Cocky gulped, cowering and deciding he had said enough, dashed off into the hole. I can hunt, and I will prove it right now! Snapped Shamsher and stormed out of his house, banging the door shut. It was all very well for Shamsher to rave and rant at being poked fun at, but the truth was that it had been quite a while since he had hunted. Thanks to his thoughts being always and only about winning the best groom lion contest every season, he had spent more hours shining his coat rather than chasing prey. His legs ached and his lungs wheezed as he breathed, and all this when he had just walked. Imagine what would happen if he tried to chase an animal. Well, no harm in trying," mumbled Shamsher, refusing to give up. So he lay in wait behind some tall grass until Django the deer cantered in with a carefree smile. Ah, been quite a while since I had a nice big deer sandwich," muttered Shamsher, crouching as he got ready to pounce. But barely had the grass rustled beneath Shamsher's flexing paws that the fit and lithe Django's ears perked. Django turned and, spotting Shamsher in the bushes, darted off at top speed. Nimbly leaping to a safe distance, Shamsher, who had run only a couple of steps, was already panting hard, clutching his tummy. Hey, Shamsher! Called out Django. I think you should bring some skates next time you hunt. Maybe then you will move faster. Ha <laughs> ha! I will teach you to mock me, you insolent deer! Roared Shamsher, furious. But there was nothing much more he could do. As Django trotted away smartly with a pitying smile, sighing aloud and full of sympathy for himself, Shamsher got to his feet tiredly and wondered as to what next to do. Ugh, my feet seem swollen and my whole body aches. If I don't rest a while, then forget getting a meal. I won't be able to get home. With these thoughts, Shamsher limped along, looking for a resting place, and soon came upon a small cave. 
Hmm, this cave seems quite cozy, but it also looks as if some animal has made it its home. Shamshir peered closely and found paw prints of a smaller animal near the cave's entrance. He had a sudden brainwave. Hey! What if I hide in the cave and wait for the animal who lives here to return? I won't even have to chase it, for I will simply block it from escaping and trap it within its own home! Ha <laughs> ha! Shamshir limped into the cave and slyly hid in the darkness within. Soon it was evening, and Felix the fox, who lived in that cave, returned, weary and tired, ready to retire for the day. Shamshir, who heard the approaching footsteps of the fox, tensed, ready to pounce. He was by now very hungry and couldn't wait to nab his prey. Felix smiled, relieved to reach his home, and was about to saunter in when his eyes fell on something strange and he froze in his tracks. There were the prints of a much bigger animal, like that of a lion or tiger, going into his cave, but none coming out. Felix gulped, all his fatigue now replaced by fear. Was there a dangerous predator inside his home? Would he be in danger if he went inside, or was he just being silly worrying for no reason? Felix was confused for a while. Meanwhile, Shamshir waited anxiously. He even managed a quick peek out and saw the fox staring at the cave. Why isn't the fox coming in? Thought Shamshir, desperate to grab Felix. But Felix was a true fox, cunning, smart and not one to take foolish chances. He decided that there was only one way to find out the truth. And so, clearing his throat, he called out in a cheerful voice. Yoo-hoo, cave! Hello! How are you? The cave, of course, was silent. Shamshir, surprised, looked at the cave, wondering. The cave speaks? Felix pouted and said, Are you angry with me? Why don't you reply? You greet me every day so sweetly. And that's why I love staying in you. The cave still made not a sound. Uh, come on, cave, say something. But the cave stayed quiet. Fine, you rude cave. I don't like you anymore. I'm going away now, never to return again. Shamshir panicked. He had to do something. So clearing his throat, Shamshir said in his best cavey voice, uh, Hello, dear fox. I'm so sorry to upset you. Don't go away. I, I was asleep and so didn't hear you return. Come, come, come inside. I'm all ready for you. Felix laughed loud as he recognized Shamshir's rough voice. Ha <laughs> ha, of course you're Shamshir. But sorry, I have no wish to be such a foolish lion's dinner. Only a lazy, foolish lion like you would believe that caves can talk. Ta-ta! You may stay in my cave and chat with it as long as you wish, for I will never come back again. And with a quick wave, Felix the fox disappeared swiftly into the forest. Hungry and tired, Shamshir returned home learning one valuable lesson. Caves don't chit-chat. Handsome Shamshir meets Harry Hare. Shamshir the lion flicked his mane and said aloud to himself, Oh, you handsome lion! There was no doubt. He was the best looking lion of all. And he won the Looker of the Pride award every single year. Shamshir would spend hours grooming for he knew that all the lions envied his glossy coat and shiny mane. There was only one small problem. Because Shamshir spent so much time on looking handsome, he rarely found time to get himself some food. But Shamshir did not want to hunt by running after deer and rabbits and getting himself dirty. Instead, he lunched on pineapple jam sandwiches. But today, he had run out of all his favourite pineapple jam and his stomach growled. Shamshir was left with the only other choice of hunting. But the lazy, proud lion thought aloud. Well, I have brought such glory to the jungle and its animals. So it's the duty of the animals to take care of my needs. Why should I sweat and toil to get my food? My food should come to me, without I having to hunt. 
So, Shamsher sent a message to all that every day at noon, one animal had to come and present itself as his lunch. The news spread like wildfire and soon a meeting was held among the animals. Though there were many wise and strong animals, one of the most respected was a young hare called Harry. Harry was very smart and often had answers to difficult situations. Now, as Big Bro the Elephant scratched his head worrying about Shamshir's orders, Harry spoke. What is there to worry so much about? Husna the hippo said. Shimshir has ordered that one of us agree to become his meal every day so that he need not hunt. Who will agree to be eaten by a lion? And who will go first? <laughs> Harry laughed. Shimshir is a proud lion and it seems he is getting lazy too. Very well. I'll go as his lunch today. But she will gobble you up. Aren't you scared? Asked Montu the baby monkey. Ah, uh, don't worry about me, said Harry. And waving goodbye, he set off for Shamshir's den. As Harry neared Shamshir's den, he paused. I need a good plan to outwit Shamshir, thought Harry. And he popped in a couple of his favorite strawberry peppermints and chewed slowly on them. In an instant, his face lit up with a smile as a great plan formed in his brain. Thanking his trusty peppermints, Harry hopped quickly on towards the lion's den. Meanwhile, Shamshir was getting so hungry that he had even forgotten to admire his coat. When suddenly, Harry burst into the den. What happened? You seem very excited. Asked a surprised Shamshir. I just, I just saw the most handsome lion ever. He's new to the forest and he was roaring loudly that there's no one like him. Said Harry trying to catch his breath. Shamshir frowned. Roar! Did you not tell him that I, Shamshir, am the best in the jungle? Oh, I, I did, I did, O Majestic One. But he laughed a loud mocking laugh. He then ordered me. Take me to him. I will teach this pretender a lesson. Shamshir was out of his den, stomping angrily, and Harry, hiding a smile, hopped forward. Soon the two reached an old well. He has made this his den. He's inside, oh great Shamshir, said Harry, pointing into the well. Shamshir leaned in and saw a huge, striking lion. He was shocked. The lion was indeed handsome. What Shamshir did not realize was that the lion he saw in the well was his own reflection in the water. Thinking it would scare the lion off, Shamshir roared aloud. His roar echoed back and Shamshir thought it was the other lion roaring back. See, see how he challenges you? Harry remarked. Well, then I will make him regret it, said Shamshir and dived in without thinking. Splash went the water and Shamshir realized that he had been fooled when Harry the Hare laughed and called out. Ha ha ha! Hope the bad doesn't spoil your good looks, Shamshir. And next time you want a meal, go hunt for it yourself. As Harry hopped off, Shamshir groaned, for now his mane was all wet.